If you've ever wanted to make your own glazes, uh, but have been put off by the number of different ingredients there are and the complexity of the recipes and how you'd have to invest hundreds of pounds and have loads of space to buy everything and set it all up. Well, hopefully my latest blog post will help you with that because I had the same thing when I got started. I bought probably 20, 30 different materials, some of which I still have the original tubs that I bought five years ago because they're not ingredients that I use that much at all. But you don't know that when you're starting, so you don't know how much to buy and of what um, and what each ingredient does in a glaze recipe. So, what I have been meaning to do for a little while and I've finally got around to doing is I sat down and did a bunch of recipes that all use the same five basic ingredients. So the way recipes are put together, generally speaking, is you have ingredients in what is considered the base and then colorants that you add to that. And there's a lot of overlap between materials that would fall into the base category. Um, a lot of them do similar things to other ingredients and it's just personal taste of the potter who originally came up with the recipe as to which ingredient you get. Um, but you really don't need all of them. You can do a lot with five. And something I've been thinking about for a while, which five would I pick and then how far can you take them? So I finally got around to doing that. So this is going to be the short intro video. I will do a longer one. But this is just sort of the companion to say, if you like the sound of what I'm talking about, go and check the blog post or watch the longer video, which we'll discuss in more length than I put in the blog post, just because um, it was getting a bit wordier than I wanted it to for an intro post. Plus, there are things that are easy to demo and hard to explain in type. So I will do a video that explains everything and demonstrates it. Um, this video is just to say, if you're interested, check the blog post. Um, but I will shove the links to the recipes in the description. And I will tell you the five ingredients now so that you don't need to go to the blog post if you can't be bothered. Um, but the ingredients that I have picked are nepheline cyanite, whiting, frit 3134, uh, EPK, and silica. And in the blog post, I have linked to shops that sell these ingredients. Uh, in the UK, I've used Pottery Craft because I think they're great. They do free shipping over £100. Uh, their customer service is great, and they send things out in plastic tubs, which are very useful to use for mixing the glazes up in after you've emptied them. So I'd recommend them and they're my go-to. In the American category, I just asked on Instagram, got recommendations from people and picked one of the most popular um, and I found the ingredients there. So if you don't know what ingredients you're looking for, um, you can follow the links and it's quite helpful because there is a different in, difference in um, naming conventions between the US and the UK. So I say silica, and I say silica because that's what American potters call it. Over in the UK, you, well, what I buy is called quartz. Silica generally refers to silica sand, which is a much coarser mix. So it's one of those things where having, I wanted to have somewhere that you could click through to get to the to right ingredient, you don't need to know that to, to buy it. But those are the five ingredients. I would recommend buying, well, depending on how much you want to test, but I buy five kilo tubs. You could buy a five kilo tub of each of them, and that would allow you to do an awful lot of testing and then mix up a few dippable batches of whichever ones you wanted to use. Um, the glazes that I have made, there are a few kind of 
what I consider to be studio standard ones. So there's a glossy base and a matte base, and the idea being that they are clear or white in the case of the matte, because they stand, but you can add colorants and you can add stains to them. I recommend the colorants that I would buy first, but basically I would go um, titanium dark side, cobalt carbonate, copper carbonate, um, red iron oxide, manganese dioxide, chromium oxide, I believe. Yeah, chromium oxide, tin oxide, um, and then some form of zircon. And again, these are all described in the text, but each one of them contributes a different colour, so there isn't really much overlap there, and you do have to buy whichever one you want. You can't treat them quite the same as you can the base and um, kind of reduce the number of ingredients you get. But if you want a blue, if you want a green, you can't, unfortunately, for the most part, swap the colorants around. But you don't need to buy them in great quantities and quite often ceramic suppliers will sell them in much smaller amounts. You don't need to buy them by the kilo. You can buy them in tens of grams rather than that much. So all set, this will cost you maybe 100, 200 pounds slash dollars to buy all the ingredients to mix up. Probably not even, yeah, probably 100 pounds to buy them all. And you'll get um, many, many pots worth but the real advantage comes from being able to mix uh, small test batches. So rather than buying a whole tub of an Amoco glaze to find out whether or not you like it, you can pick up one of my recipes and um, do tests with 100 grams to see what you think of them. Anyway, I've got the sidetrack there because what I'm saying was the types of glaze that I've got. So there's the two bases to add colorants to. Um, then I've done a glossy clear, which has got a bit more movement than the glossy base. But um, the reason for that is that it gives a better clear and then combines nicely with other glazes. It's actually the one that I use on my pieces. Um, so I'll include an image here of how glossy and transparent it is. Um, then I've done what I call a floating base, but it's essentially like a floating blue starting point that you can add any of the colorants to it and get a, an interesting uh, variegated effective glaze like that. So that's the one that I think most people are going to be interested in because you can get a bunch of different colors. Because of the chemistry I've used you can use chrome tins so you can have a kind of flowing pinky glaze or blue or green or orange or you know it will take anything pretty much you can get most colors out of it um, and it will work well with stains uh, then there is an oil spot base uh, oil spot glazes are basically ones that use a lot of iron and the iron bubbles up to give a spotty pattern um, they're quite simple they work best with a cover glaze so that's where the glossy clear comes in. You can just stick something like zirconium in it. Um, and then what you get is the glaze bubbles up through the white glaze and it's quite interesting. Um, then I have done some glazes that I do not call food safe. So those ones should all be food safe. They use um, very stable chemistry, they've got a good flux ratio, they've got enough glass formers, enough boron, they're going to be dependable as long as you don't go overboard with the colorant, so anything within a couple of percent should be fine. The next ones are kind of speciality glazes, they do interesting effects but I don't consider them food safe, uh, and they are a snowflake crackle, which is my, my all time favourite glaze effect. Um, awkward to work with, but a lovely uh, looking glaze. Um, a metallic gold, which is definitely not food safe because that actually uses 
the colorants to fluxes. It's got a lot of manganese and copper in it. Um, I would not want to eat food off it. But as a sculptural or external only glaze, you can use it on the outside of your mugs where food's not gonna come into contact. Um, it's a very interesting glaze. Um, and then finally, there's a microcrystalline glaze. So one that forms little um, crystals within the glaze itself. Doesn't run very much. It's not a, a true crystalline glaze like crystalline potters use, but it's heading towards that. It uses all of the, um, well, it uses the five ingredients plus a bit of zinc to act as a something for the crystals to form around. So I've sort of cheated a bit there because zinc would often go into the base recipe. Um, but by including it in the colorants, I've, you can more easily vary the level of it to adjust how many crystals you get. So those are the glazes. Um, the idea being that you can very easily mix quite a different range of glazes there. So you can have some very different looking pieces depending on which glaze you use as your starting point. Um, but it gives you a lot of things to test. I will continue to produce examples of what things can look like with these glazes. Um, but it should be a very good starting point. Plus the five that I picked are also probably some, maybe not my five most used, but definitely ne well, the only one that isn't in the, the top five most used is the frit, and that's because most recipes use jet borate instead. Um, but there's supply issues with that because the mines closed down, and reliability issues with it because it's quite variable. So. It's a nice material, it is also a slightly problematic material, which is why I picked the frit instead. Um, but these should be five very good ingredients to start using other people's recipes as well. Um, but certainly, as you see, I've got a variety of recipes. So as a starting point, buy those ingredients and some colorants and then you can try a whole bunch of different things. Um, and that was the idea. Um, I will continue to add to it, but I have tested the, all the recipes to the point that I'm happy with them. I mean, obviously they're fired in my kiln to I fired just below cone six. I think they'll work um, anywhere from cone 4 to cone 7, some better than others. Uh, you'll have to see how they work for you on your clay body. But they're working reliably for me, so I'm happy putting them out. And that is basically it. I'll do, as I said, a longer video that explains it all in much more detail. Um, or you can read the blog post and the links to the recipes are in the blog post uh, along with the links to all the ingredients and the basic equipment that you'd need to get started. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So I hope they all work for you as well as they do for me.